Bubble Venture and Fellowship team and work with a team of teams in setting up our fellow visits, including Theo and, um, and anyone else who has helped. Thank you, Lauren, in the past. Social media work. Um, so just, I'm going to give a little introduction to Claire, and then we're going to turn the time over to her, and we'll save plenty of time for questions at the end. So Claire was elected into the Shoka Fellowship in 2007. She is from Uganda, and she started the Hill Preparatory School. And um, one thing that I've just been kind of learning a little bit about Claire as I've been um, reading a few of her bios that I think is really fascinating is that a lot of her inspiration for starting the school comes from her own family. And I'll let her you know, tell the story herself that she has. She found out that one of her daughters was diagnosed with learning disabilities. And if I'm telling this correctly, um, she was told to move to the UK in order to have her, you know, her daughter really learn how to um, to be in a better school where she could learn. But Claire didn't want to do that, wanted her to integrate in normal school, and so that's why she started the Hill Preparatory School, and it's for um, this exact reason, so that students with learning disabilities and other disabilities can integrate in a normal school and be with you know, children, any other children their age. So um, she started the school, was elected into the fellowship in 2007. Um, and has been continuing to expand her work since then. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Claire. Thank you. Oh, and just really quickly, those of you who are joining us through Google um, Hangout, Google Class, Google Hangout, you're welcome. So I think we're starting yeah. with the video. Is that I'm right? starting out with a thank you to Ashoka. Because Ashoka has enabled me to have that. I would never have had it techni technically. I don't know the web. I don't know where to press. I don't have the money. I don't know how it works. I don't know anything. <laughs> but because of Ashoka, this tape came out three years ago, uh, four years ago, when I was elected. And even then, I didn't even have the knowledge of reading about it myself until my stipend period ran out. So that's the impact that Shoka can do for an individual. So.
Thank you. So that is a brief about uh, myself and how the idea was inspired. And again, I want to thank you that all the energies you put together, they make an impact worldwide. Because I don't know how many people have read this or seen it, but it has gone out. It has gone out professionally and it has gone out with a whole lot of network people. Um, uh, yes. Can we have you come stand up here oh, just I, so people are watching remotely? Can okay. Yeah. So I'm giving myself. We've given ourselves 20 minutes so that we can give you enough time to ask questions, because um, you know one can go on and on, and that's not good either. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what has happened since then, so that you know where we are now. And then you can see what the challenges and benefits have been, and then we can move forward from then on. Um, after the after that um, introduction, one big thing that we learned, apart from the publicity for the world, was to be able to, to be trained on how to, to interact with with people, social entrepreneurs or, or investors, capture their their interest for a few minutes, and let them be. And then when they show interest, then you show more detail. Then when they show interest, you show yet more detail. So um, we have flyers that people can just look at. Whoever asks questions, you then give them a little brief summary. And once again, through Ashoka, a group of people came to school, and you could then give them a case study, which has more details. So today, we just have flyers that you can look at and see. So right now, we have continued to do what we do. And the flyer just says the motto, integration. And it says the services that are offered, ABCDE, um, special integrated special education, special facilities for the national exams, uh, nursery, pre-primary, P7 primary leaving education. Now you can imagine this is a first whereby you do exams in such a way that never before have We've been able to do oral exams, or have um, a, an interpreter, or have extra time for children who need it, and things like that. So our examination center for the national exams has that facility. And so you can tell the world that you do that. Vocational classes for people who are not, who are not going to do academic work. Counseling for parents, for pupils, teachers, the public. Teacher training, they come to do their public, their training, um, what do you call it, their pub, uh, so teaching practice, because it's one thing to do it in the university in theory, and then you have to have another opportunity to put it into practice. So ours is a center for such. And then we have assessment clinics, physiotherapy, follow-up home visits, we have therapy, we have the school library and services, parent-teacher workshops individual education programs, referrals, and apprenticeships. So at least you can tell the public that that's what you do. And then in the vocational class, we say we have cookery, tailoring, sports, and recreation. Um, our pride is the, since the Special Olympics goal that we got, uh, we put up a swimming pool, half Olympic size, so that it's one of the training places that can do tournaments for training, for therapy, for jobs, for not just playing, because it's, it's, got, it's got to be the, the length that you do international tournaments. And so our kids can be able to not only do the physical and the mental, all of them, but you can create jobs in, in coaching and mentoring and lifeguarding and keeping the place nice. So our, none of our kids are unemployed. They have jobs. And then... Um, and that place is a, a unit that can make money whereby the public can come and use those facilities and so it can help us to subsidize our costs and other sports along around that rotating around that we have a bit of agriculture um, and dairy farming and sometimes poultry farming now because we are integrated we are very well known for that sad story as it were or poor Poor so and so has a child who's you know rejected here and there, but the beautiful thing is that when you're integrated with other children who are not 
having uh, special needs have also proved to us that they have excelled. And the first batch of people, actually, one of them got an upper second, meaning a very good degree. Uh, so, you know, we have proof that it works. Um, and so we have been happy about that and we have expanded the facilities, put up more buildings, finished the pool. We started, um, a, a, every year we have a, an Independence Day swimming gala. So now it's a fashionable agenda on the calendar of the Uganda Special Olympics. It is on the Swimming Federation calendar and it is on our calendar and many schools have begun to come. And this year is going to be special because Uganda is celebrating 50 years of independence and also the German ambassador is going to come. So that gives us the profile that we're looking for. Thank you. Now, our biggest challenge has been that the product is difficult to sell. Only if you have a problem will you come to Hill Preparatory. If you're okay, you don't come because the stigma is still big. So somebody can come, drop the child with a disability and take the other three children to another fashionable school up the road where they pay three times as much and they don't mind. So it's very, very difficult to sell that product. Very difficult. Having done it for so long, having had the government support, having had um, success stories all the way through, people will not come. And because of that, the enrollment remains small. Because the enrollment is small, you have difficulty in making ends meet. And yet, we need the experts. We really need high quality, high caliber, speech therapists, education, clinical psychologists, um, and such people. And we can't afford them. So a good time, we, for a long time, we, we depend on volunteers, we depend on part-time people, and it's not quite it. So our goal is that we put all those little integrated projects into one center and call it an, a center and have it in a nice place by the pool. So that instead of saying, oh, you want the pull out program? Okay, go around the back. Or you want the vocational? Or go to the other side so that the public is not confused so that we can attract the regular, more and more regular people. That's our key thing. So in that regard, we have got a new a new brochure for next year, which will try to target those regular people to come. And once they come, we'll be home and dry. Because if we just doubled our numbers, we would uh, be able to cover operational costs without difficulties. And then we'd be able to start our investment plans without, um, uh, without uh, begging. So that's brochure number two. It's going to come out just to target more and more the regular people. And this is what we normally do anyway. So um, the other future plan is that we would like to um, have a chance for our headmaster. We have a great team of people, but we'd like our headmaster to come here. And we have an opportunity to go to a school that does this thing, interact with the experts, and be confident in what he does. Because he's a good manager, he's a good head, He's committed, he's got integrity, he's got all these things, and he just needs that little exposure that I have had a chance to have. So it's important. We also would like to have the experts, if you can help us identify real experts who can come for at least a year, commit to a year. As they work with us for a long period of time, then they can leave the skill with us here. Um, the other long-term plan we have is um, it, more and more exchange programs. We've had exchange programs with teachers going back and forth, but we've never had the children go out on their own. They have gone for their sports, but they have not gone for to be in a community, to be somewhere. Yeah, especially the young adults. Um, I think. Oh, I'm. I'm also happy to share with you this. It is a. a, a a supplement of what we had done for the 20 year celebration. And again, it was our teachers who insisted that we must commemorate 20 years of existence. And of course, I was saying, uh uh, we can't afford it, you know, five million, no way, no way. 
And again, it was through a Shoka connection that one person I met at Shoka who paid for half the cost of this thing. And also at Shoka, when they were training us, one gentleman kept telling us, he kept beating the desk and saying, close the deal, close the deal. <laughs> so I ran him and I said, I need to close this deal. <laughs> it was closed. And he went out in the papers. So you'll see that. And then I want to also finally share with you that um, these are two kids from our school. They both have special needs. Um, but that was you know, about five years ago, I think. And this is my daughter when she finally graduated in, um, in uh, catering. Um, she went to a regular school. Imagine to go to a regular secondary school. She got a second grade, which was like average in the national exam, without the special facilities. But then she went to a regular school, which offered, you know, home management type of course, which she was that way inclined. And then she went to a college. Um, I don't know, why, why the PCA? I don't know what that would be equivalent to. But she graduated, you know. It wasn't a big deal, but we took a picture and, you know, we were happy. And, you know, she got a lot of recognition and she said, they would even ask her, how did you, how did you succeed? I said, never give up, you know. I mean, it's just incredible that this person who I never knew she would say, Mommy, can I have a glass of water? He's the one giving us advice. He said, never give up. So that is how she now works with us in the school. But she worked in a, in a hotel and got tired. She did her industrial training in a big hotel. We didn't want her there because <laughs> it had night duty and it was difficult. Then she went to work in a guest house, again, home management. She came to school to do home management. She was doing too much scrubbing and, you know, and so we decided she'd do the scrubbing mid-morning and then in the afternoon she'd do um, library work because children who are autistic and who have speech, they, they tend to be very logical and very systematic. And so she's good in the library. And my pictures there had children, other children who you would have seen, how they have excelled and it's beautiful. And um, her best friend is uh, got, you know, I don't know what you can call it, cerebral palsy on this side, and she's always been weak on this side. And the two have been friends. One, they help each other. But it's interesting that my daughter used to help her friend to do, you know, washing and all that sort of thing. But the girl got married, had her baby, and it's interesting that she was holding the baby on the other side, which we thought was weak. So. The lesson I learned actually is that from these children, the best parts of us come out. I've learned patience. I've learned to talk to people. I've learned to be humble and to wait my turn and to hear exactly what she's saying, not to put her off, because I know what she's saying is pure. I ask, and what do you think we should do? She says, first give them a call. And that has made me a better person because of her. And uh, I just want to thank you all for your time and to thank my network members who have come here. George Senior, he's a, he's a, I don't know what you can say, he's an expert, you know, these people, these scientists, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Oh, well, um, I, I'm in my, I do software, software engineering. See, those ones where I don't you know, <laughs> press enter and it doesn't go. And, uh, and you? Oh, George Jr. Yeah, what do you do? Um, I study meteorology. No, come on. <laughs> He's in high school. He's in high school, yeah. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, oh, yeah. Julie, Julie and Theo and what's your name? I want to thank you because you're the three who coordinated my visit. So next time when I'm better equipped, you'll see more and more pictures. I have pictures galore, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. So we're happy to take any questions. Yes, um, definitely. You can open it up the floor to questions for a few minutes. Um, so how many kids are at your school now, and what are their age ranges? The age range is from about 3 up to 18, 19. Um, the children are slightly over 100, let's say about 15 in each class. If you get there, that's good. Um, about 40 of them have special needs, and the rest are regular. And again, as I say, 
the regulars will not, you need, you need about one child with special needs and three without special needs. We try and get a sponsorship for the two and we ask the parent at least to bring one and they don't like it at all. So we ask them to contribute to a fund to which we can then sponsor some children who are bright but who cannot afford. And uh, so that's why we really have to target the regular children. I've seen you. You must have done. No, you. Yeah. Yes, I've seen a picture of you. Or <laughs> 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 your double. <laughs> Maybe, so. Maybe, yeah. What is some of the expertise that you're looking to bring in for the school? Like experts in, in what kind of field? Software development? Oh, yes, definitely. What other kinds of things? Yeah, um, we need um, admin, sort of, somebody who's administrative, but with very good, you know, technological skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we need people who are doing studying special education. Uh, we need special education teachers with, with an interest and an ability to, to stay for a long time. Some people who care, actually, people who care. Yeah. We need then the specialists, the, the physiotherapists, occupational therapists, the speech therapists, um, the clinical psychologists, the education psychologists. Um, even people who have skills like, you know, you can be good at teaching to read, for example. And if you can invest your time in getting children to read well, that, that they go home and drive. You know? uh, physical education, we had some people who are good at that. Um, very, very good at physical education and sports and games and you let's say you want to start a, a um, like someone has come in actually to start a dance class. So now that should be regular part of the timetable and not to say, oh, so and so was here for the summer and, and now it's no longer there. Has to be there for a long enough period to ensure that there are people who can continue the work. Yeah, as long as we don't have to pay for that person coming, that's always the tricky part. Mm, we had subdivided them actually the needs. There are some people who are more medical and others who are more educational. And um, the, the medical people can work with, we work with Molago Hospital. So for example, in Uganda, when we started, there wasn't one speech therapist in the whole country. And we got one volunteer from the UK. We begged her to come because she was excellent. She said, I can't come to one school. I need to go to a university where I can train many trainees. So that gives us an iota of her time. But we are happy that now we have the first batch of speech therapists came out about three years ago, and they come to do their teaching practice at our school. Not only that, there are now many centers. The thing is now on the stage. And oh, I, I love the, the theory of, of Ashoka, which says, Everyone a change maker. So there are many now. You can go and study speech therapy, and there could be about 20 that can graduate in a year. So that multiplies quite quickly. There are other centers, especially the international schools. All of them now have a special education unit. And those that have government input, they also there are quite many around the, the country. So it's not just us. We seem to be like a, like a demonstration school where people can come and, and observe and they can do their training and they can come and interact and then they go back. So there are many, many schools that with whom we exchange in country. And the ones that can afford it, especially the international schools, can quickly set up a unit. So um, we, are, we are quite pleased about that. The only trouble, oh yes, the big challenge now is that because the training is so intense and it is so long, once you get people who are highly skilled, they go to other schools where, where they can pay them some good money and the cycle continues. You have to start again, all over again, all over again. 
idea. So um, we have to live with that and find find ways to retain our good people as much as possible. Then we, we sorry, yes. Oh well, no, please. No, no. I was curious about uh, during the the school day where you sometimes pull out students if they're having issues. Um, and I was just wondering, what are some of the behavioral issues that you see, and, and how do you how do you work with the children? What happens when they get when, when they get there? Out? Yeah, when they are pulled out, mm, you're right. So some some of the children you have a let's say this is one class, and I'm one teacher, and there's some quite bright kids who are up in the front and they finish their work quickly. And then there are two at the back who need a lot of attention. And I can't give them enough attention the other would be. If we cannot afford to have an assistant, some classes we, we can't have an assistant. And that person begins to distract these ones. You've got to pull that one out of the class if they're distracted or if they're not benefiting. Take them to the pull-out room and get that person there to do whatever is needed at that time. Maybe that person needs to just calm down. Or maybe the person needs that lesson to be repeated in a different way. Or maybe to be given a different activity altogether. Mm. You would have seen the pictures. We now have nice outside places. So you don't just have to go to a pull-out room. You can go under the, you know, the mango tree and they're nice stools and it's like a picnic or you can swing and you know you can break the rules officially you know sometimes you come into the driveway and you find some people on the swing because really they need to go on the swing at that time because having sat in the class for 15 minutes is an achievement in its own self anyway yeah so some can be destructive some can be noisy some can be one was a little violent and some can just be in another world you know just just achieving nothing so it's not fair to keep him there either so those are the things that go on in the pull out how what's the severity of the uh, disability that you have is there sort of a minimum level of functioning that the students need to have to be enrolled or is it open for anyone at first we it was open to everybody you know when you think you can do anything and then we found that some people are not benefiting from the integration. Some people um, were just not benefiting. So at least we have the referral system whereby we have our professionals where we can take children. But we never turn somebody away as such. You can still say, even though you can't do A, B, C, D, why don't you come in on a Friday afternoon, for example, and at least play with somebody, some other children for half an hour and go home. Or, so those are the, it's mild to moderate. Mild to moderate, yeah. Some who have mild and can have enough of support to attend the national exams, those ones, we can go with them all the way through. But for those who will not be able to go that far, that is why the center that we're building is important to house them. Um, you were saying that they all have jobs. Do you help them after they graduate to find employment? Yeah, yeah, a good number. We, we help them. But remember from the word go, we're working together as a team, the parent, the professional, and us. Mm -hmm. So we know. By the time they leave, we know what their strengths are. You can see from the word go that this one is good, for example, with children. Or this one is very, very good. One had a job. Just stapling, stapling papers. That was all. That was all they did. And then in the end, they had that many books, which we then bought. You have to create the jobs, or talk to the people who have businesses, or talk to their parents. And often the parents are very, very supportive. Yeah, the parents are supportive. Uh, I was just wondering what you envision for the school like in the future and what are some of the big goals you have? Do you mm. see more campuses or do you see the program spreading to other schools or is that a goal? Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, we were thinking 
that um, because of the, the intensity of the work done, we would make, we would build the center within the campus, the special needs center. Have the school running to show how integration is operated on, have the center to do the teaching and give the services of people who are not necessarily in the school, and then use our partners. We have partners all over the country. We have a, a network of parents throughout the country. They have a, um, each district, they have a group. So, and they do advocacy and information sharing so they can come to us and we can host either the children or their teachers or somebody. So we have that center here, there, there at the school. Also, we've had inquiries from, from Kenya, from Tanzania, from uh, the Sudan, from Rwanda. So if you can make the center good, rather than have many spread out, half-baked institutions, we've opted to try and make this one a, a center of excellence to spread out, to give the support. Yeah. But people sometimes ask, oh, but why don't, I'm traveling from so far, why don't you put up a center, you know, where I live? And it's not easy. But we, we realize that people are putting up centers, and those very people are the ones who come and share with us. So it is possible to go through somebody else. That's the vision that we have. That's the vision that we have. And uh, the government is quite supportive of what we do, though they cannot give us the, the funding that we need. And there's a condition for the funding, which is then they take it over, and then they hire the head teacher. And then it would be difficult to maintain the vision if it's the government running the, the show. So, by the way, the, the, the pictures here of the staff. So you can see they're very, very committed staff. And you can see here, this is the first um, set of children who finished, who did their primary leaving. You'll see my daughter there. you see her friends. One of the friends was Miss, Miss Uganda. Miss Uganda tourism, something like that. Can you imagine? And this was a child who, because the regular people don't want to come, the fashionable people don't want to come. So my friend, my partner, her house help, the daughter of her house help, used to be brought to school by bicycle. You know, like the lowest social strata. She's the one who turned out to be Miss is tourism, you know, of Uganda. And then the one, the little boy whose face is um, circle is the one who got a, a first class degree in uh, development studies and then went on to get a scholarship to do a master's, you see. And he's regular and he's from a very high social class. So the integration is all round. It's not just social class, it's not just academics, it's not just um, uh, uh, people with disabilities, it's, it's all of us. Our longest serving staff is uh, hearing impaired, and she's the most loyal person you ever saw. Another one is also hearing impaired, and her child was the best in our school in uh, last year's exams. And she just sailed through and got a scholarship at regular school, secondary school. So this thing can be made better to multiply over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, Eric, can you tell us a little bit more about your personal story? I know you mentioned your daughter, um, yes. but maybe talk to us or tell us about the moment, the aha moment that, that you had or what really drove you to believe that you were the one who had to to do this and make this change for your country? Uh, and challenges that you faced along moment, the way? The aha moment. Oh, that's what you meant by aha moment. <laughs> 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 now, I really can't remember the exact moment because, oh, I, I remember taking, I remember she couldn't talk, so she was a late developer and we thought, oh, well, she get out of it, so we didn't pay much attention to that. And I remember she used to bang her head for hours on end, for four hours, banging, banging, banging. So we thought that was also odd. And um, 
getting myself in danger, running around to water, to fire, what, what. So let me say she was an embarrassment to us all the time, wherever we went. Until somebody said, but why don't you tie her on a rope? You know, just tie her on a rope so that, you know, a leash, you know, keep her there. So those were painful. And uh, also some of the medical people were not helpful because uh, they, they, you know, they went and talked, you know, about us behind our back. But the one good teacher came to me and said, something doesn't work well upstairs. And she was open enough to tell me something is wrong upstairs. She's not there, but something is wrong. So that's what helped us to, to investigate more and more and more. And eventually, when, when we, you can imagine driving your car for three months to take your child to school. And after three months, you open the exercise book. You think that others have done drawings and things. And there's just a little squiggle just a little squiggle like that. So for three months you've been driving your car to take the child somewhere. She's being laughed at and she's being, they tell you, uh, you, you know, she was uh, bewitched or you spoiled her because you're rich and uh, all sorts of things which were, you know, painful. Um, but then there was a psychologist at Mount University, the head of the psychiatry department, said maybe your child is schizo, maybe what, I don't know. But try, just try. Let me refer you to my professor who was in the UK. Well, famous, famous, famous uh, doctor. And when we went, we had to book months and months and months to see the, that, that doctor. And after seeing him, uh, those people who were in the field, you mentioned Michael Rutter, it's like mentioning Professor Eunice in the microfinance field. Professor Rutter, can you see your child? Wow. So we went. And then what he told us was sort of what was instinctively in my mind, that what you're doing is okay to spend a little bit, because that teacher lost her job when she came out with the truth. And she came out to tell me what she thought the matter was with the child, that something was not wrong. And in a way she lost the job because the head teacher didn't want to hurt me more when I had just lost my mother. So she had, you know, it was a delicate balance. But the woman thought, I might as well tell her now rather than wait. So because she sort of told me before telling the head teacher, she lost her job. And because she lost her job, I was able to take the child to the regular school where I knew she wasn't getting anything, and also to that lady in her living room so that that lady could spend quality time with her. So maybe that might have been the moment, I don't know. But the confirmation was Professor Rutter saying that what we were doing was right. And then he told us to go back the following year and he confirmed that what we were doing was right, depending on the development. And then after that, he said, go back in year three. We said, ah, no, that money for the plane, we will use it for our project. And so that's how we grew. But eventually, after many, many years, Dr. Rutter's assistant came to the school and assessed all the children in the school and did a training for all the parents, left a report for all the children. And so that was another milestone for us to follow, to know that we're on the right path. OK. Yes. Have you, have you seen or do you know of similar initiatives that have, are happening in other countries? In other countries around the world, I I hear that it is normal in the Western world. Many people come from Europe and they say, "Oh, that's how we do it." So for us, I think in Africa, that's why it was a bit of a novelty. But I think I hear that isn't that the case even here in the United States? Integrated special education, where children have a an individual education plan and the government can play, pays towards it. Yeah, it's just that we don't, our government doesn't support us in this regard. But other countries, the Western world, they do it. But in, in our parts of the world, no, it's, it's tough. It's very, very, very tough. So those who are uh, beginning to do it, they 
they have like a pull-out program. The whole school is sort of regular, and then they, the kids who are special can play together with their counterparts in the playground. But to do that integration, no, it's too difficult. And we're not sure that it has been the right path to get the impact that we need. That's why we have to target the regular people. Other people who have done it start with a good number of regular children who can afford to run the school from fees and then find out the token child who needs support. And that way it can work better, it can work better. But we started on the other way and that's why, maybe that's why other people have not done that same model. And then others, you have a unit, a unit for the deaf, special unit for the deaf, or a special unit for the, the uh, impaired, what is it? The visual impaired, okay? yeah. A special unit for physical. Like for us, we don't think physical is, uh, is an impairment. You see? Yeah, because academically they can cope. In fact, the beautiful thing was, you see, um, we need experts like him, and there's one who's very, very, very good because uh, he's, he's physically impaired. He was in a physically impaired school, but his brain was working extremely well, and now we go to him for help. And he, he, because he's that way inclined, he, he can think, he can analyze, he can be logical, he's good with the computers, he doesn't lose his temper, he helps you with your problem to the end. You see, because he's sitting in the chair all day. He's not moving. And he won't go away until he, solve your, he solves your problem. And he was in a school with whom we were integrated. We, we used to work together. We used to get his people from his school to come to our school and back and forth. And so that is another reward, which we only got recently. Can you imagine? And he talks to the rest of the world and they ask all sorts of difficult questions and they give you the answer on a silver platter. You know, it's so wonderful to see. Any other questions? Are there any other questions for Claire? Okay. Yeah. Well, everyone, and thank you for coming. Yes. Um, if you guys are interested in getting to know Claire a little bit better or talking with her, um, she'll be on the community floor um, for a little bit this afternoon, but we also encourage you to follow her on the Ashok Club. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you all for having us. Hi, Claire. I'm Hello. Claire as well. Oh, <laughs> I have an eye.